tonight on Showcase with Barbara Keller. Historic preservationist Taya Chepkama discusses muses, the women of Music Hall. Stay tuned. Showcase starts now. Welcome to Showcase. Thank you. We love having you. You were here once before to help us uh, learn something new about Music Hall. You're a historian, but you have a new venture, which is, tell us the title. Muses, the Women of Music Hall. Oh my gosh, how interesting is that? I know that historically there are a lot of important women uh, who built the hall and kept it going. So you're gonna tell us all about them. Uh, oh, there's so many. I, I don't think I can tell you about all of them. Well, <laughs> but pick some, pick some of your favorites. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, I, I started doing research on this topic because um, I'm on the board of the Friends of Music Hall and I'm a historic preservationist and um, I'm also, I also serve on the Tours and Education Committee. And I wanted to tell the stories that we never tell of the people that we don't hear about um, that helped uh, build Music Hall, philanthropist and women artists who have performed on the stage, the main stage, and women who also performed in the ballroom, the Greystone Ballroom, and uh, some inventresses who were women inventors who displayed machinery um, in the great industrial expositions. Um, I found some inventresses um, but uh, just digging, digging into finding those stories uh, about women that we, we just don't, don't know. Yeah. Well, start with the beginning. Tell us who you think was the most important in the beginning. I was inspired by a painting on the ceiling in Springer Auditorium. It's called The Allegory of the Arts and many concerts, I've sat there and stared at it and noticed it's mostly all women in the painting and kind of uh, started to figure out the symbolism uh, in the painting and discovered it's the nine muses of the arts. And that was kind of my inspiration or kind of you could say like my outline. Yeah for this talk. So I took um, the nine muses and decided I was going to find a woman that best represented each muse um, in that painting. And so, you know, the muses of the arts are music, dance, science, history, um, tragedy and comedy, the dramatic arts, um, and uh, and Nesemini is the mother of the muses, and she's the muse of memory. And I decided um, the Friends of Music Hall, we are not just about preserving the building, we're about preserving the stories mm -hmm. of Music Hall, just like Nesemini, mm -hmm. uh, the mother of memory. So we are telling the stories of Music Hall. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for instance, the, the muse of music, uh, that was a hard one because, oh my goodness. There are so many. So many, so many famous, amazing women that have performed on the stage of Music Hall. I mean, from the very opening of Music Hall with the very 
you know, first performance, uh, out walked on the stage, the, you know, the May Festival soloist, um, the phenomenal May Festival singers mm -hmm. uh, that have graced the stage. Um, but besides uh, May Festival, you know, the opera, the ballet, uh, all of our great arts um, in, in the city um, have all been represented by women. Yeah. Uh, t is there a woman who you would say started the whole... The great benefactor of Music Hall that we talk about so much on our regular tour, our, our Friends Music Hall guides. Um, I also started to take our regular tour in my mind and said, what are these 10 stops on our tour where we mostly talk about men? Oh. Okay. And I thought, well, who would be the woman I would talk about at this stop on our tour? And we start at the statue of Reuben Springer. Mm -hmm. And Reuben Springer was that benefactor of Music Hall that, you know, gave $125,000 to have the building constructed. And I looked at his wife. And his wife, uh, Jane Kilgore, was um, her father immigrated to Cincinnati from England and was one of the pioneers of Cincinnati, came here just 10 years after Cincinnati was founded. And he and his brother started a dry goods business and steamboat delivery of, mm -hmm. of groceries. Yeah. And it was Reuben Springer born on a farm in Kentucky that came to Cincinnati to work on one of those steamboats and worked his way up in the company, started doing the account books, and eventually became partner, and then married Jane Kilgore. And Jane Kilgore loved art, especially the visual arts. And she, uh, you know, took her husband on grand tours of Europe and introduced him to all the masterworks, all the great paintings, mm -hmm. and she, uh, was one of the founding members of LAFA, the Ladies uh, Art, Fine Arts Academy. And it was an organization of Cincinnati women that wanted to start an art school for, for women to learn uh, to create art to, to make money as employment. Um, so to help women become independent and they also wanted to start an art museum so that this, the public be, could be elevated and educated in the arts. And that organization, LAFA, uh, unfortunately had to disband right before the Civil War. But, um, and Jane Kilgore uh, died young and she and Reuben never had children and they attended all of these arts events around the city. And so if it wasn't for Jane Kilgore, you know, introducing her husband to the arts, who knows? Music Hall may have Ma never been constructed. Right. Might have been a parking lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Jane Kilgore, uh, the Kilgore family uh, is was prominent because Kilgore School. Oh is, yes, was named for that family and and the Springer School and Springer School. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and there was phenomenal art in the schools at that time. Yeah, and um, another woman that I talk about in my talk is um, Elizabeth Williams Perry, and um, she started another fun acronym, WAMA. <laughs> the Women's Art Museum Association, mm -hmm. and it was based on LAFA, the yeah. women before her. So it was based mm -hmm. on Jane Kilgore's group, and WAMA started in Music Hall. And those women collected art um, and had loan exhibitions in Music Hall and people could come and, and it was our first art museum. 
in the city. Wow. It was in the South Hall of Music Hall. And they actually um, raised money and gathered art uh -huh. to start the Cincinnati Art Museum in oh. Eden Park. Oh my gosh, I don't know, very few people would know that. Very, very few people know that, yes. Yeah. Who would come after, after this? You know, that's the muse of art, uh, the muse of music. I love to talk about uh, Ciceretta, Ciceretta Jones. Um, she, before Ciceretta Jones, was a famous soprano named Adelina Patti. And Adelina Patti uh, was the 19th century star uh, singer. Um, she came after Jenny Lind. You probably oh, know Jenny Lind. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so Adelina Patti uh, came to sing in music hall. Um, the first time she came was to sing with the May Festival and she got paid $4,500. Wow. And the paper said something like, oh, she got $10 a word. Oh, <laughs> a note. <laughs> yeah, a note yeah. for singing the Messiah. And then she returned uh, three time, four times uh, for the opera fe uh, festival that was hosted by the Cincinnati Music, uh, the Cincinnati, Music Conservatory, Cincinnati mm -hmm. Music Conservatory. Okay. And um, there, were, she came. Uh, the se the first time she came, you know, sold out house. And then the second time she came, she arrived with laryngitis. Oh, great for a singer. Yeah, mm -hmm. bad. Um, but by the t on the fifth day of the festival, she recovered from her mm -hmm. laryngitis, and music hall was filled with seven thousand people. Wow. For what that a concert. Standing room. Yeah, that would be both corridors right. packed with standing people right. uh, trying to listen to her inside the auditorium through the transom windows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that probably goes down as like the record crowd. Yeah. <laughs> well, after that, we had fire rules. <laughs> yeah. And after um, Adelina Patti came to Music Hall, Sissy Retta Jones. And Sissy Retta Jones um, was nicknamed um, in the press as the Black Patty. Um, she was an African American soprano, uh, raised in Providence, Rhode Island, sang at the Philadelphia Academy of Music for her debut to a crowd of 8,000. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then she immediately, after her Carnegie Hall debut, mm. came to sing at Music Hall. And that's how important Music Hall was on a traveling singer's tour. Yeah. You know, your next stop after Carnegie Hall was Cincinnati Music Hall. And she sang to a crowd of 2,500 and um, was one of the, was, I would say, definitely the highest paid um, black artist of the 19th century. Um, and she, and in the paper, it said that it was the best element of black and white citizens in music hall, in the audience. Oh, wow, that's yeah. great. So she preferred to be called Madam Jones. Oh, okay. <laughs> and after her? In Ventresses. Uh, I, I was like, um, okay, I have lots of famous women, many famous women who've sang on the main stage. Um, that's easy. Um, and then I thought, well, what about the North Hall? And you know, the North Hall was a sports arena from 1928. Yeah, wrestling. Yeah, yes. I did find a female wrestler. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, the we had to find two so they could wrestle each other, not a man. Oh, actually, other. yes, more than one. But I, yeah. uh, I found, you know, there every Tuesday night there was women's yeah. wrestling. Oh, great. Right alongside of men's wrestling. Okay. So many female wrestlers. Okay. But the one female wrestler that I lo loved and I highlighted was Mildred Burke. And she actually founded the Women's World Wrestling Organization. She was yeah. the founder. 
and she wrestled in music hall 10 times. Wow. And she won all 10 of her Oh my matches. goodness. <laughs> and it was, probably was for real then, not just entertainment. Exactly. It was it a was, real wrestling It match. was a wee bit of drama, but yes, not as much. Right. It was as a little a, more sport. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you, I know you have many, many more we want to hear about, but how did you put this program together? Is this just research that you've gotten from lots of different places, or is there a definitive book How'd you do that? It was just a lot of uh, a lot of digging, a lot of newspaper articles, and I do have kind of my favorite librarians and friends who I know are experts in certain topics. You know, the three women librarian at the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra uh, helped me. You know, mm-hmm. I could get a great a uh, soloist with the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, like um, Maud Powell, who was considered the, uh, a more extraordinary violinist than Chrysler and Isai. I mean, she was phenomenal, and she performed at Music Hall several times. Mm-hmm. And um, Fanny Bloomfield Zeisler was a pianist who was, uh, you know, world-renowned uh, pianist who performed at the very first Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra concert, their very first soloist was, wow. a, was a woman. And of course, the founder of the CSO was uh, Helen Nellie Heron Taft. Yes. And we, our, the CSO was founded by an all woman board. 15 women, were the, we were the first all woman board to found an orchestra in the country. Wow, I don't know how many people know that. No, not a lot of people know that. (laughs) Yeah, that is, and would most of those names be familiar to Cincinnatians for other things? Well, I think I think people know of of Helen Taft as you know the wife of William William Howard Howard Taft, our Mm -hmm. 27th president. Yeah. Um, But a lot of people don't know that um, she had very humble beginnings. Um, She lived uh, on Pike Street, right across from, you know, what is the Taft Museum today. Right. Charles Charles P. Taft's and Anna Sinton Taft's uh, mansion. Um, But she lived in a modest row house across the street. And she loved music. Um, She studied the piano, and um, she was on, she was in a woman's club that was before the CSO that was called the Ladies Musical Club. Yeah. And it was women across the country that were forming these clubs Mm -hmm. to make society better and to advance life for women as well. the Ladies Musical Club uh, was a group of women that could either play instruments or wanted to hear good music. Um, yeah. And they, were, they uh, would book halls all over the city and they would invite uh, all these, uh, especially women soloists like Maud Powell and Fanny Bloomfield Zeisler This is where Helen and the Ladies Musical Club got to know all of these famous women Mm -hmm. uh, soloists so that when we finally, they formed, they were the basis of the founding of the CSO board. Those women from that club, they formed the club for this, you know, the board for the CSO. So. Yeah, I know you have in your your talk, uh, you mentioned Mariah, Longworth, of course, was probably the most, the best known. Yes, everybody that. knows um, Mariah Longworth uh, Nichols because and st- then married Storr, so Mariah right. Longworth Nichols Storr right. uh, founded Rookwood. We right. we all know that, um, yeah. but uh, she also um, adored music and. She started the May Festival with her husband, George Ward Nichols, um, 
And what I also do when I do my research is I try to find, you know, really good quotes that kind of represent why they were doing what they were doing. Right. And um, Theodore Thomas, the first music director of the May Festival, was invited by Mariah along with Nichols to be with her husband to be the first music director. Mm -hmm. And he said, a quote from him, was that he would accept that position because Mariah Longworth Nichols had great taste in music. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So um, she also uh, was fluent in German and she would translate the librettos uh, from German to English. And she said that she would try to put them in words Americans could understand. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a pioneer. She really was uh, an artist, an entrepreneur. Yes. Uh, she was everything. Another uh, woman that worked for Mariah, she was uh, worked for her at Rookwood, um, was Laura Ann Fry. And Laura Ann Fry was the first teacher at Rookwood. And Laura Ann Fry was a wood carver. And she designed nine of the wood carved organ panels mm -hmm. for the organ in Music Hall and carved one. And her parents uh, immigrated from England mm -hmm. and they were Swedborgian. And I learned something new. Cincinnati still has a Swedborgian church really? and a huge Swedborgian community. And the reason they immigrated to Cincinnati was for the Swedborgian community here. And yeah. I didn't know this, but the Swedborgians were way ahead of their time. They believed in women's equality, that women could do the same thing that men could do. And so her parents raised her, um, you know, in believing that she could carve, carve wood, just, just like her just father like, yeah. and her grandfather. Um, she could hold that mallet and yeah. hit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, Laura Ann Fry was one of our of hundreds of women that carved the organ panels um, that are actually the Friends of Music Hall restored 30 of the 120 uh, organ panels, and they're on display in Music Hall. And I talk about. Um, a couple more of those women that uh, carved panels uh, in music hall. Yeah, would those uh, have been, would she have been about the same time as Ben Pittman? Yes, um, she, well, uh, her father, Henry, her father, William Fry, and her grandfather, Henry Fry, they had their own art carving studio on 4th Street. And it was a private school but very welcoming to women because they knew women could carve. Um, but at the same time, uh, Ben Pittman was a teacher in art carving at the McMicken School of Design. And it was both of those schools that had a lot of women in their okay. classes that were commissioned to carve the panels mm -hmm. for the music hall organ. Mm -hmm. Wow, we could we could listen to this forever because it's <laughs> absolutely fascinating. Um, how can people, if people are interested in Friends of Music Hall, how can they join? We have a website, the Friends of Music Hall dot org, mm -hmm. and um, I actually we have another talk that um, I just completed. It's called Under One Roof: The African American Experience. Mm -hmm. in music hall and um, like women um, finding stories that have never been told about the African-American influence in this community it's very difficult um, those stories are very hard um, to track down and bring to light and I'm just really thrilled that um, I found so many great people to talk about and yeah. if you just go on our website you can probably you just uh, find there how you can book 
uh, one of these talks. Um, oh, so anybody can could uh, have you come and talk to their group and give this full talk. Yes. Not just the little excerpts we've given today, but the full talk. And then you have the African American one coming up. And will you give those first to the group? And then if people want you to do it elsewhere, then they contact you? Yes, you, you can book on our website either talk and um, they're um, 45 minutes to an hour and I have mm -hmm. great, great images. I've found mm -hmm. some really great images, um, you know, with the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, right. So Yeah, it sounds wonderful and I know you're gonna get a lot of, a lot of interest in your, your historical, uh, well, that scholarship is amazing. Oh, thank you. And uh, we all can benefit from it because it's really, really interesting. There's so much to talk about, about music <laughs> hall, and this is a big part of it. And um, also on our website, um, if you just go in the top menu bar and find the word blog, um, I've written some much longer <laughs> detailed stories of some yeah. of these people. So. Um, I've written a blog about Sissy Retta Jones and Adelina Patti and mm -hmm. Fountain Lewis, an African-American barber whose story is phenomenal. Um, so, and Mamie Smith, Mamie Smith, the, the, the blues singer from Cincinnati who grew up just south of Duke Energy Convention Center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, check out the blogs. Um, on our website if you want some reading. <laughs> that sounds great. There's a, a treasure full of uh, wonderful information. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you. I think your talks are, are appropriate anytime, any place, anywhere, because they're just so fascinating. So thank you, thank you for all your scholarship and for sharing it. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Join us next week for another episode of Showcase with Barbara Keller, right here on CET.